going down uh, about every second. Huh. I'm checking the jail, get the jail. So really quick what we're going to be doing here basically these are the cutoff switches that I just previously mentioned um, like I said anywhere where I need to jump wires to make certain sections of fence hot I've been using these just makes it handy when you're working on something you can flip on and off and you're not energizing miles and miles of fence at one time you can just start knocking these off and uh, de-energize an area that you're not going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a hot wire to that, obviously, because that's the first intersecting point to this hot wire here. And then once that's connected, we're going to tie one to here to go to this paddock right in here. And so that insulated hot wire right there will hook up to that. <clears throat> and as you guys can see, the pastures, this pasture is the last one that they have not been in yet. And the foliage is absolutely gorgeous in here. There's plenty of food in here. Hopefully this will last them about two weeks. And then once they're done with this, we'll move them back into the one that I'm currently in right now. And as you can see, it's actually coming back really good. The rain that we're getting is really spurting a lot of growth, especially in my hay fields that we've already mowed and baled. And uh, if it continues on like this for the summer, it's going to be a very good year for us for pasture wise probably the best that we've had yet so what we're using here is uh, underground wire usually you can find them at any of your uh, farm and fleet feed stores whatever they come in like 50 foot rolls and they're insulated and you just strip off the coating where you want and this is what I'll put in crimp on end and then I'll just wrap the other one right around the wing nut so I use these it just saves from wires arcing. I always in the past just use bare, uh, I think it's 12 gauge wire, maybe 14 gauge wire, and just wrapped it around the fence to make jumpers like that and just put like a little gate hook. And really, this is just better because over time the fence, the jumper wires will move on you, especially if you have a longer wire, and they'll arc off the uh, non hot wire here and just it'll short stuff out and it's just pain in the butt so we're improving here like i said it's you know the 2000s and there's a lot of really neat products out there that you can use to do this kind of stuff make it more efficient for your farm so that's what we're doing right now <music> use these uh they're little i call them half crimps you're able to slide one over your wire that you're working with and then you're able to connect because it's got a half hook on anything there so you don't have to worry about having two exposed ends and we'll crimp them with the trusty rusty rusty is right pliers pain in the butt to use but they work well. there, now that we have our hot wire going into the cutoff switch now we can put our jumper wire going on and then what we'll do while we're here we're going to take off the old way that we used to do this and like i said before all i ever did was just wrap a really light gauge metal wire galvanized metal i think around a hot line and then just put one of these fancy gate hooks on there and I always just clipped it onto the where I wanted to jump from but it wasn't always foolproof these would get knocked off once in a while and if you weren't adamant about checking the fence and stuff like that uh, you knew it because you had cows loose America Okay, now before we head back over and uh, make sure all this is working properly, we'll throw the voltage uh, tester on there just to make sure everything is working before we 
let the cows out into this pasture. I wanted to show you guys something really quick. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, we ended up buying a crap ton of American flags. They were they come like uh, 14 to a package, I believe. They're the smaller ones with the little wooden stakes and stuff. And I ended up drilling holes in all the fence poles going up the road. Actually, I think it's every other fence pole. And uh, on both sides of the road on our fence, we have American flags lined up. And that actually looks really neat when you're driving up and down this hill. Uh, just to show our pride in America and uh, proud to be an American. You know, and that's what it means to us. So we're gonna let everybody know. Say good morning to the girls. <laughs> What's up there, girl, huh? So, as you guys can see, what we got going on here is we have a ton of water line. This is three quarter inch, uh, 120 PSI. It's a thicker wall pipe. And what we did this year is basically along our fence borders, following the fence, is I laid 1,200 feet of line and I put spigots at each individual paddock. So now watering, which is very essential to cow's growth and health, we were able to get water to each and every one of these pastures. I was w a little leery about how well it would work being the pressure pushing uphill that much. And oh my God, look at that. Look at the foxes, you see them? Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Just what we need. Foxes running in with our cows. They must not know I'm here because they would have been. Bam! Gone. Yeah, so what we did was we were able to make spigots. <clears throat> I got two water tubs here. There's one down there by that Kwanzaa hut where you guys saw the foxes. And we got a spare tub here that I've been just kind of rotating from pasture to pasture. We put water floats on these, hook it up to the hose, turn the valve. There you go. It's as simple as that. Uh, most anybody could probably figure that out. But all we did was, was we zip tied the line to the fence poles, laid them along the line because it cows aren't going to walk on it um, going through the gates I did lay it over top intention my intentions were to actually throw gravel over top of these because it does get traffic with the four-wheelers and the tractors going through here at times but uh, and we got one up there a little ways so it just makes it nice because the pasture you see the cows in right now is the pasture that was always the water pasture our source of water was just down by that blue barn down there and uh, basically it just this pasture here never would recoup because you could never take the cows off of it and uh, this is also an essential pasture for our rotational grazing program that we do here and it just it wasn't working out so it was worth putting the 1200 feet of line in eventually I would like to extend the lines tie onto them go a little bit further and we will be downsizing our size of paddocks <clears throat> so making more so there's actually more rotation going on our average size for a paddock right now with these animals is let's just call it four acres and that's more than enough i would just assume have two acre paddocks rotate them more not letting them get the grass down so far so that's kind of how that plays out so what we're going to do though we're moving the cows into that wooded pasture they're going to go through a little opening in the woods down there and i got a gate to let them out into that pasture <clears throat> down here where the fences can join in multiple areas i have a bib hose bib well yeah a hose bib we're going to take that water tub put it down there try to find somewhat of a level area especially being these are on float we got to make sure that the water tub is level or else it's going to just constantly overflow and it's going to burn the water pump up so we might have to dig a little bit over there to get the water tub to sit flat but we're going to get that hooked up so they have water in that area and let these cows out in there
So I'll take you guys along here and this is what I'm talking about having these cutoff switches for. Anywhere we have a gate crossing, which is right here. Usually I have, uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, quiet. Usually we have under wires under the ground. This one's overhead, but it's a jumper wire. So I am able to not get shocked, flip that off. Now what that does for me is down there where I gotta work, throwing the water tub over the fence and stuff like that, that is no longer hot. I don't have to worry about getting zapped. Sorry guys, I do not like electricity. Probably be good for views getting zapped by this fence, but tell you what, it ain't worth it. instead of digging because I set the water tub up and it's leaning forward a little bit so the water naturally is going to flow to the front of the tub not sit level and with these floats if you're sitting level that it only leaves that much of the rim showing so you got to have these fairly level for these floats to work properly to shut off when they need to so I think instead of digging the ground up I think we're going to tick these ants off <laughs> and uh, use some of that as backfill. Easy digging. We'll just lay it right there. Holy crap. I gotta love it. We got everything hooked up. Uh, the ants, they're probably really, really lividly ticked off at me right now, honestly. Because I just destroyed a beautiful home that's been here for years. So any for you ant activists, I sincerely apologize. I was just trying to make my workload a little bit easier. Um, we got the water tub set in place. It's going right now on the float. You can hear the trickle in the background right now. Sounds like babbling brooks going on, but uh, it's just a, a dirty old water tub going on. Anyways, uh, I noticed though when I was hooking up to the hose bib down here, that the ground was fairly saturated, even though we have gotten quite a bit of rain lately. Right here where I 90'd up to get my upright for my hose bib, it's leaking. It looks like when I was heating up the pipe slide on the rib connector the 90 degree angle that I put on that I might have heated up the pipe too much and when I crimped the uh, band clamp down I must have made a little protrusion or something's going on so we are leaking water there so it's been leaking for a while obviously I need to get that fixed because like I said we this is a self-contained system you don't want it to constantly be working and the pump eventually at the well is going to put some strain on it by just constantly kicking on and off because you're losing the pressure. So we need to get that fixed. That's important. So as it stands right now, we're going to get these cows moved first. We'll let the water tub fill up a little bit so it's full. So they actually don't come in here and knock it around, move it off of its level platform that we've built. And then we'll let the cows out. But Actually, before we let the cows out, see, I always get ahead of myself in my projects. The bull. The bull needed to come over here around the 1st of July. Here we are the 10th of July, and he hasn't been moved yet. So we got to get the bull over here so he can uh, get reacquainted with his girlfriends and uh, make some Pew View Farm magic. So we need to get him in the barn, get the stock trailer on the truck, and get him loaded up bring him over here with the girls actually before we move them because it's a lot easier for the trailer to go into this pasture where the cows are at right now. There's the bow. You ready to go over and see your girlfriends? Huh? You ready to go over, to go over and see Bahama Mamas? Huh? 
basically that's it. Uh, right there's my ringmaster. He knows what's going on. Huh, Linky Doinky. Hi, Linky Doinkies. So we'll uh, coax them in with a little bit of grain and uh, see how that works. Well, you guys didn't get to see excitement because there wasn't any. Uh, let me just say that he he went on super easy. Just tossed some grain up in there and he walked right on. So, <laughs> all right. Girls are curious of what's going on. I'm sure they know what's going on. Bull, he's probably pretty darn happy right now. Come on there, boy. Go see Bahama Mamas. Go sniffy some tail. There we go. The release of the bowl. July 10th, 2021. Look at him. They haven't seen him in what? Three months? Yeah, let's just call it two months. And uh, they're sniffing, checking him out. And I'm sure, he's uh, she was one of the first ones to have a calf, so he's probably definitely gonna. And that's crazy, B. So, oh yeah, look at him. He's already trying the jumpy, humpy. That a boy. Look at the boys laughing over there. They always get all blushed in the face when the old man talks about Jumpy Humpy. <laughs> huh, calves? Huh? Is that your papa? Huh? Is that your papa's? Just as long as you don't think it comes my way. <laughs> Are right. they? Oh yeah. He's definitely taking a liking to 84. And uh... Huh, crazy B. There's your boyfriend. You gonna share? This is a good thing done. We knew we needed to get it done. He's, uh, man, he's already at work. Look at him. Nose up in the air. All right, guys, so a conclusion to the morning basically here on Pew View Farms. As you guys can see, we did end up getting the cows moved into this other pasture after we got the bull in here. So they are going to love this. There's plenty of shade in here for the humidity we've been getting lately. And uh, ain't much foliage here. But up in this section, there's a ton up in these locust grove and then down below. I would say there's a good couple of acres of really thick full foliage. So I'll uh, let these guys chow down on this for a couple weeks and then uh, move on to bigger and better things. All right, guys, gals. Uh, thanks again for uh, checking this video out. If you've made it to the end, obviously you're listening to me ramble on. I just wanted to thank you guys one more time again. Uh, for everything that you guys have done for the channel. I know I've been kind of AWOL lately, but uh, we're going to try getting back into the swing of things. Uh, we miss it. I miss it in particular. So, And I miss documenting the lives of the girls that I spend a lot of time with. <laughs> that sounded pretty corny. <laughs> so that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do me a great big favor. Like the video. Comment down below and subscribe to our channel. And uh, thanks for coming along on our journey. I look forward to talking to you all real soon.